Tesla has launched a brand new home charger, which, well, the price is shocking. It's how can Tesla make these things and really make a profit selling them? Or is that not even their plan? Ah, maybe not. Maybe this is more about simply crushing the competition. Pretty smart strategy if you ask me. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. Great to see you. Thank you for tuning in. I'm Sam Evans and you're watching The Electric Viking. Big shout out to our Patreon supporters. Thank you so much for funding the channel. Um, well, not completely, but it definitely makes makes the lights come on and, and I really appreciate your support. If you'd like to support us on Patreon, I'll put a link in the description below. Tesla wants to own home charging, but I think there's a reason for this. They have introduced a new wall charger that can top up any EV, whether that be a Tesla or not. So basically if you bought a Tesla, right? And then your second EV or your first EV, whatever it is, your other EV at your home is a non-Tesla vehicle. You could use this charger for both cars, or you could use it just for Tesla, or you could use it just for non-Tesla EVs. It's actually pretty amazing what this thing can do for the price that you're paying. After mass adoption of its open source North American charging standard by EV and charging station makers, Tesla is now moving to own the home charging market as well. Its new wall connector means you don't need an adapter for CCS or NAX charging, which is actually really cool. Tesla has launched the only home charging option that can charge any electric vehicle in North America. This is really a North America product. So, I mean, if you're somewhere else, then it's not really gonna be relevant for you. The new universal wall charger is priced at what I think is a pretty staggering price of US $595. It has a combined CCS and NAX Magic Dock connector of the type that Tesla started equipping some of its supercharger stations with. Now, if you want to use it as NAX, it just comes out basically of the charging wall as just the NAX. If you want to use it as CCS, you actually pull the whole thing out and it just has this extra thing on the end. It's actually a very seamless operation. And I think it's a really, really nice way they've designed it to integrate this feature. The way those who top up at home will be able to charge their electric car without pesky adapters, regardless of whether they drive a Tesla or other EV brand, will probably demonstrate to some potential EV owners that well, maybe they should consider a Tesla as well. I mean, if you're going to go and buy a charger now, honestly, it would make sense to buy this one from Tesla, even if you bought a Hyundai EV or a Ford EV or whatever it is EV, I think it would make sense to get this charger regardless. The other thing worth considering is this is future-proofing your charging decision. If you go and buy a charger right now and it doesn't have a NAX connector on it, that could mean that you buy your next EV, whatever charger you bought is no longer going to be useful for you. It's possible. It's possible that some EVs in the future, whether or not you buy a Tesla or another car, will be NAX charging only. So this is kind of future-proofing you. And it also means you have the option of using both using a Tesla NAX charger or a CCS in the same unit that works really well. The so-called universal wall connector by Tesla aims to democratize home charging the way that Tesla did when it open sourced its North American charging standard, the NAX solution. And actually, this is a good thing. I think it's a good thing anyhow. Having the same standard, if this helps people to move to NAX quicker, that's a good thing. The move led to mass adoption when I say the move, what I mean is the move when Tesla said, yeah, everyone you know, can use NAX, and all of a sudden Ford and General Motors jumped on board very quickly. Ford first, then General Motors, then a plethora of other car manufacturers saying that their future vehicles, Volvos, etc., Mercedes, would have a NAX charger. So this decision has been the biggest decision by US EV manufacturers and just US car companies really in the last several years. And if you think about it, Tesla was mocked. It was mocked by the media by saying the NAX charger, we want to make it the North American charging standard. They were told that was stupid. That was never going to happen. Uh, the naysayers said this was arrogance and hubris on Tesla's part. Well, it's happened. It's, it's already sorted. So yeah, the way that the universal home charger works is by providing a locked CCS plug at the end of a NAX connector that is released when pressing the button on the handle to charge a CCS equipped EV. For Tesla owners, the Magic Dock simply releases the NAX connector. Now, of course, 
for Tesla owners, it doesn't just apply to you. If you buy an EV in the future, it will have, it may only have an axe connector, it may have both, but what are you gonna use? What would you prefer to use, right? If your car has an axe connector or a CCS connector, obviously you're just gonna use the NAX one, it's gonna be the better option. Tesla's new universal wall connector costs only US $595. It's scheduled for release in October with the same specs as Tesla's existing separate NAX or J1772 home chargers, such as a 48 amp power output and a 24 foot cable length. Now, if you already have a home charger at home that has CCS on it and you want NAX or vice versa, you can just buy an adapter from Tesla or, or probably on eBay or Amazon. So you don't need to run out and get one of these. But if you've just bought an EV and you need a home charger, this is, in my view, without a doubt, the best option to go for if you live in North America. Of course, if you live elsewhere like Australia, well, not the case. And let me know your thoughts in the comments. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.